What happens when you awaken an iron beast after a 50 year slumber? Jason Orr of 955 Automotive described it as opening up a time capsule of sorts. The last time the 1967-68 Mickey Thompson IndyCar lapped Indianapolis Motor Speedway was back in May 1968 with Bill Pewterbaugh behind the wheel. It's been sitting in a warehouse storage ever since. It wasn't until George Lyons purchased the car in 2016 from the Mickey Thompson family with plans to fully restore it that the race car, featuring a three-valve Chevy V8 engine, had been gone through. The end goal for Lyons was to show the car at the 2018 Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance. Lyons, an IndyCar collector, brought the car and engine to Bob Orr Restoration in Erie, Pennsylvania. Bob's son, Jason Orr, owns 955 Automotive, the machine shop in the adjoining building to the restoration business. Jason had the pleasure of getting the engine in working order again, and we're going to give you the details. I'm Greg Jones, the managing editor of Engine Builder Magazine, and welcome to Engine of the Week. This video is sponsored by Cometic Gasket, sealed by Cometic, and by Pengrade Oil. Precision, performance, pen grade. Always the original green oil. Jason and his team at 955 Automotive were the first people to do anything on this engine since it came off the track in 1968. Jason said the engine leaked a lot of oil and subsequently they found nearly 40 shop rags stuffed inside as a means to stop the leaks. Here's Jason to tell you more. It was as raced, has not been run obviously since May of 1968. So we were tasked with getting the thing apart, reverse engineering everything that was in it. And we had Cometic made us gaskets where the thing was just a, you know, a lot of O-rings, you know, no real gaskets in that engine. But the corrosion took over so much. Those guys over there made me head gaskets and they made us intake gaskets and they made us a bunch of stuff that it didn't have that we needed to make the thing live now. It was pretty cool because it's actually, it was a race engine. You know, it had a Crower camshaft in it, milled on main caps, um, old X crank. We kept all that stuff as original as we could. Just went through and found modern day parts for all the wearable stuff. Valve spring was, it was a tough find. I mean, I think I scoured three months in catalogs trying to find something that would work in these heads because they were such a wacky design. Other than that, the thing was pretty cherry. Block work wise, 955 Automotive touched up the line hone and had to weld the decks up. They found that two of the exhaust ports had porosity in them, so they had to fix that so the engine would hold water again. The magnesium valley tray, which is also a water spider, was completely rotted out. The shop ended up repairing it with aluminum slugs and making a whole new water spider by replicating the old one using pictures. In addition, the engine needed a typical valve job and cylinder head repair. However, those jobs turned out to be a little more than typical. And the heads were Mickey Thompson specific. He had two versions. He had an eight port version and a 16 port, and these were 16 port. I mean, it took 12 hours to get the cylinder heads off the thing. Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's hidden bolts, and you got to take the rocker system off in a specific order. You know, it had push rods that run down across the head and actuated rocker arms on the exhaust side that seemed to work backwards. You know, everyone thought it was a dual overhead cam motor. Well, that was the rocker covers on the thing. Despite some corrosion and a couple funky setups, the 50-year-old engine ended up being in pretty good shape. 955 Automotive didn't do any performance upgrades to the engine. Rather, they simply tried to keep the history of it. Parts-wise, that meant the engine had Mickey Thompson titanium rods, the original Crower cam and lifters, the original Moldex crank and Mickey Thompson pistons, Clevite bearings, pack and comp springs, and a Hillborn fuel injection system. In total, between labor, sourcing parts, and having stuff made, the build took a full year. 50 years ago, this V8 made 565 horsepower out of a 305 cubic inch engine. It's now race ready once again and was presented at the 2018 Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance earlier this year. Well, that does it for this episode of Engine of the Week. A special thanks to our sponsors, Cometic Gasket and Pengrade Motor Oil. And remember, if you have an engine you'd like to see featured, 
please email me at gjones at babcox.com. See you all next time.